Space and our commercial space sector has long been an advantage that the United States has had. We need to keep that advantage. In the past, we've had technological superiority and our approach has been to control or limit that technology going to other countries. We will have to rethink that. We will have to rethink space diplomacy, how we approach space commerce, our own commercial sector. It is a great tool in the toolkit for international cooperation. Hello, I'm Carrie Bingen, the director of the Aerospace Security Project and a senior fellow in the International Security Program. In the CSIS 2024 Global Forecast Report, A World Dividing, I take a look at a growing area of China's space program, its commercial space activities. A lot of folks are paying attention to China's space activities, particularly on the government side what the military is doing, threats to space capabilities that date back to 2007, less attention has been paid to what China is doing on the commercial front. President Xi has made space a top priority and seeks to make China the global leader in space by 2049. Looking back at 2023, there was a lot happening in China's space sector. They broke their launch record with the most number of launches to date, and that is expected to increase even more in 2024. We're seeing a rapid climb in terms of the number of satellites that they have on orbit, second now to the United States. On the commercial front, China is now second to the United States in terms of the number of startup space companies being established and the private capital being invested in space companies. They're even on track to launch their version of Starlink, a large constellation of communication satellites, actually two Starlinks worth in 2024. It's hard to tell if these activities are truly commercial. Many of these companies are spinoffs from their state-owned enterprises, and they're receiving heavy funding from the Chinese government. But it is a pathway that they're looking to for innovation outside of those state-owned enterprises. China also has a national intelligence law that compels private companies to share their information with the Chinese government and to keep it secret. I also write about how China's commercial space activities could be integrated into their overall Belt and Road Initiative. It creates another avenue for the Chinese government to access others' information and sensitive data, and it creates a pathway for China to export its surveillance state policies. Space and our commercial space sector has long been an advantage that the United States has had. We need to keep that advantage. In the past, we've had technological superiority, and our approach has been to control or limit that technology going to other countries. We will have to rethink that. We will have to rethink space diplomacy, how we approach space commerce. Our own commercial sector is a source of innovation, a source of cutting-edge technology. It is a great tool in the toolkit for international cooperation. We have many allies and partners. Again, allies and partners are an advantage for the U.S. that China doesn't have. Those allies and partners want to work with us on space. We'll need to figure out ways to update our policies to allow such technological cooperation and to ensure that our companies are the partner of choice internationally as opposed to Chinese companies. To read the full 2024 Global Forecast Report, please visit csis.org.